I've created this presentation for folks currently studying for the PE seismic exam, looking to get a better understanding of the response spectrum method. So, what is the response spectrum method? Essentially, it's just an envelope of response accelerations uh, to given periods. So, for example, if I have got some period here, T, right? This period T, it's going to correspond to this acceleration I see here, S, DS. And if I've got this other period, we'll call it like T2, right? That's going to correspond to this other response acceleration here. Now, when I'm talking about response acceleration, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the response acceleration of a single degree of freedom system. Now, this is a single degree of freedom system in the, in the classical sense, where I've got a weightless rod, and it's got some mass at the top, right? And I'm applying some base excitation, some acceleration at the ground. And this thing is going to go here, it's going to go here, it's going to go here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go back and forth, right? The, the mass here is going gonna, gonna to go back and forth, just going to uh, displace within plane there, right? Now, it's going to have some acceleration. That acceleration is what you're going to see here plotted. But what gives the response spectrum its shape? Essentially, what's happened is that a number of ground motions are typically gone through. And they are applied, those ac the accelerations associated with those ground motions, with those seismic events, they're applied to this system here, right? The maximum response acceleration of the system, call it A sub T, right? That's taken, and that's recorded for a given period. Then that the period of the system that was used in that analysis, that's changed to another period, and another period, and another period. Until you end up with a list of maximum accelerations for a number of different ground motions, for various periods. That's how you come up with this, and that's how you come up with this, this envelope, if you will, right? Now, before we get more into this, let me just talk about the various parameters associated with the response spectrum as shown uh, in the IBC and ASC 710, right? So we have SS and S1, which are response acceleration parameters at the short and long periods, respectively. The short period being point, point 0.2 seconds and the long period being one second, right? Now note that I have parameter here in quotations as we're not dealing with the exact response acceleration of a single degree freedom system. Rather, we are dealing with a parameter which approximates that acceleration. And if you look into like an earthquake engineering or dynamics of structures type text, this has gone into if you go and actually you find the solution of a response uh, of, of the response to some ground motion of a single degree of freedom system. Uh, you can see that what we're using here, it's not the exact acceleration response, it's the pseudo-acceleration, right? And that has been shown uh, to approximate the, the exact response acceleration, and it's good enough for our, for our purposes here in design, right? So next we have the short period site coefficient and the long period site coefficient. These just, uh, uh, they take the spectral response acceleration parameters that you're given, and they adjust them for your particular site, right? Like local site conditions. And just to note that the spectral response accelerations that you're given from code at the short and the long period, they're accelerations that have already been adjusted for risk. So if you go into the commentary of, for example, ASCE 710, you will see that these are maximum considered uh, earthquakes or earthquake ground motions for some type of risk target, such as like a 2% risk of exceedance in 50 years. Okay. Next, we have SMS and SM1. These are just those accelerations, but then just adjusted for the site, site coefficients FA and FV. And then you've got your design spectral response accelerations, which are determined by code as 2 over 3 SM1 and 2 over 3 S, or 2 over 3 SMS and 2 over 3 SM1, right? So that would be your SDS and your SD1, okay? Now, back to this idea of a single degree of freedom system, right? The response of a single degree of freedom system to some ground motion, as I show here, is going to be based off these fundamental equations, right, or this fundamental equation. So to start out, to get that equation, we're going to have uh, some force 
in a particular direction, which is going to be given your, by your mass times the acceleration of the ground. It's going to be equal to some force, which is equal to the mass times acceleration of your system, plus the damping force associated with the damping coefficient times the velocity of the system, plus, say, your spring force, which is associated with the stiffness times the displacement of the system. And then you end up with the classical equation of uh, uh, motion here, which is just m x double dot, x double dots just being your acceleration, x dots your velocity, x is your displacement, and then x double dot g is just the acceleration of the ground, right? Now, consider an extremely stiff system. And actually, before I do this, let me head back to the, the actual response spectrum shape. You'll see that the response spectrum, it's actually broken up into a number of different regions. So you've got one region here, you've got another region here, you've got another region here. If the way the curve is shaped, it's broken up to another different region here. And you might ask yourself, what is the basis of this shape? Why is it not linear? Why is it not exponential? Why is it not logarithmic, right? That was a terrible logarithmic plot, but what, what is it? What is the source of the shape? Well, first off, you have to consider the fact that in a single degree of free freedom system, in, an, in the analysis of a single degree of freedom system, the response is going to vary quite a bit based off the period. So consider an extremely stiff system where your K is extremely high, your, your stiffness is extremely high, your period is going to be very low. If you put a ground motion to this thing, your acceleration of your system is essentially going to be the acceleration of the ground, right? Whereas the displacement, the relative displacement of the system, is just going to be zero. Okay. Now, when I say the displacement of your system and, and the acceleration of your system is going to be equal to the acceleration of the ground, you're really in this re at this point right here, where your period is zero, and then code has some definition. It's going to be 0.4 times SDS of what that response acceleration is going to be. Okay. Now heading back. Say you have an extremely flexible system. That means your stiffness is really high, and you, I mean your sorry your your stiffness is really low for a flexible system, and you have an extremely high period, right? If you apply a ground motion, it's just going to look like this. Where your mass is going to stay in place, your relative displacement that's going to equal to the displacement of the ground motion, and the acceleration of your system that's just going to be zero. Given that the response of a single degree of freedom system is going to vary based off your period, code has set forth boundaries, which are functions of the short period and long period accelerations. These boundaries, they allow us to differentiate between the way the response occurs at different period ranges, right? So what we've got here is we've got region one, which is defined as between a period of zero to what the code has defined as T naught, right? That's defined as your response acceleration being equal to SDS times 0.4 plus 0.6 times T over T naught. Then region two, where your response acceleration is now constant, right? Then region three, where your period has increased past what the code defines as TS. And it's defined as SD1 over your period of your system T, right? Then region four, where you've got your Acceleration being defined as SD1 times TL divided by T squared, right? Where TL is your long period transition period, T naught divided by 0.2 times SD1 divided by SDS, and TS is equal to SD1 divided by SDS. So T naught and TS, they're functions of your design uh, response accelerations at the short period and at the long period, right? So as we've noted earlier in our example, your responses, they're going to vary based off the period of your system. And where that comes from is that if you start varying the period of a single degree of freedom system and calculating the response to particular ground motions, you're going to be able to see that in certain periods, you're going to get a, a, dis a constant displacement and a really low acceleration. And in certain periods, you're going to be able to see that you're going to get a constant velocity. That would be like region 3, for example. And in certain periods, region 2, you're going to see that you get a constant acceleration. Now what I'd like to do is show that you can take ground motion data for a particular earthquake 
use it to find the response of a single degree of freedom system over a range of periods, take those responses, and then actually plot out a figure that looks quite similar to this. Obviously, it's not going to be as smoothed out, and it's going to be much more jagged. However, one should be able to draw a general representation of the response spectrum based off of a given earthquake, right? Now, what I show here is a Jupyter notebook. I read in time history data from the El Centro earthquake. So I've got time versus acceleration. Acceleration is given in units of G, right? Take the acceleration data, adjust it to be in units of inches per second squared, because I'm going to need that for my calculation. I plot out the time history for your reference. So I've got acceleration versus time here, right? Then I generate response acceleration values over a period range using the central difference method. The central difference method just being a, one of the numerical methods that has been used in the past to solve the equation of motion for a single degree of freedom system, right? So if you're savvy in the code here, you can kind of uh, read what I've done. However, if you're not, that's totally fine. Just know that I'm taking a particular period one step at a time. I'm using that to find the stiffness. I have assigned a damping ratio of 5% as is typical per building codes. And I come up with a list of displacements, right? What I do to those displacements is I, I convert them over to pseudo accelerations uh, based off a typical formula of 2 pi divided by the period squared. I take that list of accelerations and I find the maximum, right? So I take that maximum and I add it to a list of maximum accelerations with the corresponding period. What I end up with is a list of periods and a list of maximum accelerations for the system with that period, right? If I take that and I plot it out, I end up with a plot that looks quite similar to what we have in terms of the design response spectrum that we I showed earlier, right? Now, when you've got a lower period back here, you've got this lower acceleration, which is going to tend to be closer to your actual ground acceleration, right? As that increases, your acceleration increases. What we do is we idealize this and we take this up here as being constant. As your period increases past that, you're going to have a lower acceleration and then past that all the way until you essentially have an acceleration of zero, as I showed in my example earlier, right? So this was just meant to be a demonstration of how easy it is to just take ground motion data, find the response of a single degree of freedom system, show that, okay, for a range of periods, I'm going to have this varying acceleration here. And that's what the design response spectrum that I see in the code is based off of. So quite, quite fairly straightforward, right? So if you've got any questions on this or comments, feel free to send me a message or, or comment below or whatnot. I'm, I'm happy to explain anything else. Um, and I, I hope this video was informative uh, and, and it explained a, a little bit more on where the response spectrum comes from. Thanks for watching.